What's up ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Nix from the WrestlePlug and I'm back for another quick fire review of SmackDown. Yes indeed, WWE SmackDown has just gone down and frankly, I wish it hadn't. Um, as everybody knows, I'm one of the most unpopular hosts in all of British wrestling podcasting because I have unpopular opinions and I've got one for you right now. Uh, wow, Daniel Bryan opens up the show with a decent promo has to be said i always like daniel bryan he's always a great guy to watch and then he has an incredibly long-winded and boring match with baron corbin i actually quite like baron corbin too i think he's a good mic worker i think he does his job he's a good heel oh boy this went on and on and on and then they had the disqualification you thought what the fuck so you dragged me through 20 minutes of that for a, no no fuck you what's what's the point right i get it dqs are just a they're a fact of wrestling and i understand that it's not always going to be you know this fluid fantastic athletic contest but jesus christ 20 minutes and then yeah fuck off ladder shot done and then out comes nakamura and cesaro oh I'll be honest with you. These guys are scrubs. Okay. I I know that they're huge indie darlings. I love Cesaro just like everyone else did a few years back. But I'll tell you what. There's a reason that Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura are in the position they are. Basically being lackeys and not doing anything. It's because they're just not that good at entertaining people. They are great wrestlers. Cesaro is arguably one of the best technical wrestlers I've ever seen. He's definitely one of the best all-round talents. But they're not good. They're fucking boring. Their characters suck ass. They've got the charisma of a fucking walnut. Come on. Shinsuke Nakamura especially. What a flop he's been since he came up from NXT. And even then he's running NXT wasn't that special. That amazing match with Sami Zayn at NXT TakeOver Dallas, I want to say, at WrestleMania. That was four years ago. (sighs) It's all been downhill since then. And yeah, booking has a part to blame. But ultimately, these guys have not delivered. They've had opportunities. You can't say Cesaro hasn't had opportunities. Last time he was good was when he was with Sheamus as part of the bar. That's the last time I really feel like they were doing good work. And even then, you always felt like WWE were dropping the ball with them because they just didn't know what to do. They give them the titles, then they'd have them lose to the New Day, then they disappear for three or four months, then they come back and maybe win them again, and then lose to the New Day or the Usos. And. (sighs) <sighs> repeat process yeah. it's frustrating it's been a lot of releases lately and I'm never happy when anyone loses their job but you do look at guys like Nakamura and Cesaro and you think I wish you guys had the gumption to say fuck this we're out of here because you know I know the pandemic's difficult right now but when that's all said and done they could get jobs elsewhere. So Nakamura can go back to Japan, be a superstar. Cesaro could go to AEW, NWA, Impact, and he'd be so much better off for it. And even then, I still don't feel like he'd be a monstrous star. Maybe in Ring of Honor, just because character and gimmick isn't, you know, necessarily that strong, so he could probably get away with, you know, you could probably have him as the star of Ring of Honor, but come on. Come on, this is just, it's too long-winded. And, you know, this took up a quarter of the show. It's a big no-no. Nah, too much for me. Oh, and Michael Cole on comms for this match. Him, oh, Jesus Christ. Him and Corey Graves, right? Now, I'm normally quite a big fan of Corey Graves, but I do not know what happened to him. Um, Jesus Christ, like... He just seems to have fucking fallen off a map all of a sudden. So disappointing, really. I don't know if this is because of the empty arena, but focusing on Michael Cole, he just wouldn't stop screaming during that match between Daniel Bryan and Baron Corbin. I can't be the only one who noticed that. Just ridiculously over the top, like, oh my God, oh my God, like, just shouting all the time. Shut the fuck up. Like, Michael Cole is unbearable at the best of times, but when he's like that and he's so ridiculously overhyped, you just think, oh, please shut the fuck up, mate. You're getting on my nerves. 
And yeah, it, I thought it was trash. I really did. I thought his commentary was trash. And I'm going to take him to task in a minute as well because he didn't do himself any justice either with his, you know, <laughs> with the way he behaved later on as well. Uh, Braun Strowman's promo was garbage. Uh, Bray Wyatt's promo was okay. It's always good to see Bray Wyatt. I think he's one of the most creative and exciting people they've got on this roster. But this was a nothing promo and a nothing segment. Braun comes out. He goes, bruh, 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 get these hands because you can't cut a promo for shit. He's a bit of a boring word. Uh, he's not really got anything about him that screams superstar and yet here he is as your universal champion which is a joke by the way that title is a fucking joke how am I supposed to take that belt seriously when it's defended in two minute squash matches and you know joke contests between roided monkeys I, I really don't care it's a garbage belt I don't recognise it as a major title uh, I think it's Wrestling Observer was it or PWI I can't remember which one came out and said that it's considered a world heavyweight title well that that's a joke, man. You know, the fact that they think so kind of makes me want to laugh at them a bit. And they're very respectable publications, but for fuck's sake, you cannot defend this garbage. This is a terrible, terrible belt, and it's been booked horribly. And the only time I had any credibility was when Daniel Bryan and the, and the fiend, Bray Wyatt, were going after each other for it. Other than that... Uh, and obviously a few early days with people like Seth Rollins and Finn Balor getting it on and you know going after each other for it it's been fucking stupid it really has I loved it when Kevin Owens had it but they ruined it with the Goldberg thing that universal title is booked atrociously what they do is they put great wrestlers on it for you know a little while and then they have them hoof the side in favour of these gigantic roided monkeys like Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar and Goldberg, Jesus. You know, guys who just... I mean, I like Brock Lesnar. I really, really do. But, you know, he was garbage as a Universal Champion. He was much better as WWE Champion, to be fair. And his last couple of years have been pretty good. But, you know, they just put it on these big guys. They hoof aside the hard workers. You know, Kevin Owens, get out of the fucking way. Uh, what's your name? Seth Rollins, get out of fucking way. <laughs> it's just... Oh, rinse and repeat. Garbage. Absolute garbage. Didn't think this segment was very good. Um, Seamus murders some jobber. Apparently he's going to face Jeff Hardy next week. Okay, cool. Uh, and then we get this women's match. So we get Mandy Rose versus Carmella, which was good for about two minutes. <laughs> so I was actually looking forward to this match. I like these women. I think they've improved so much. Mandy Rose is actually really good in ring. Really underrated... But, so Sonya Deville comes down. Now, she cut a wonderful promo uh, recently, obviously, as everybody knows, you know, fully cementing her heel term. And she has been fantastic. She's been on fire on social media as well, really selling the rivalry, which is, you know, great to see. Um, and then, you know, she comes down for this match, kind of gets a bit verbal, starts giving it the business. That's fine. I get that. Obviously, she was going to be around. You just knew it. She carried on going. She pretty much gave us commentary for the whole match. I, I, they could have waited a while. This is what frustrated me. Once again, it, almost like in reverse of what happened with Daniel Bryan and Baron Corbin. These women were given a couple of minutes to get their shit in. And then, boom, Sonny Deville comes down. And before you know it, wham, uh, Carmella hits with a subject. This did not help anyone. First of all, Carmella could only beat Mandy Rose because she was severely distracted by Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville was a bit whiny on the mic. Didn't really work for me. Thought it was a massive step down from her initial promo. Uh, and then, of course, you know, Mandy Rose distracted looking a bit dumb in the ring there, there's got to be a way around that there's got to be a smoother way of doing that and then Sonya Deville gets in the ring obviously after the match beats the shit out of Mandy Rose that was good that looked really good really like that and this is where Michael Cole comes in because he literally goes oh my god Sonya Deville has snapped it's like sell the fucking moment asshole you were screaming at me for 25 minutes during Daniel Bryan versus uh, Baron Corbin and now all of a sudden, you've gone all quiet, have you? You don't want to say anything. Him and him and Corey Graves are like, yeah, yeah, no, it's just not good, is it? Oh, it's not very good. What the fuck? Do better. Sell the fucking product that's in front of you. You know, the match wasn't great. And it wasn't booked very well either. And the finish wasn't booked great for my money. And then all of a sudden, you get this vicious attack, which is executed well. And they don't sell it at all. They're like, oh, yeah, no, that was great. Thanks for that, lads. 
Really appreciate that. Fucking waste of time. Seriously, pull your thumbs out of your asses. How much you paid to do commentary on this product? Sell the fucking product to us. Sit on your hands and go, oh well, you know, this is this is uh this is quite savage, isn't it? No, fucking emote more. Get involved, get passionate about the product when it matters, not just about Baron Corbin versus Daniel Bryan. Jesus, Michael Cole, literally, I thought he was on fucking Ketterman during that match, the opener, but when it comes to this one, all of a sudden he's fucking on his come down. Fuck's sake, man. Do better. Do better. And also, Mandy Rose not really selling the offense afterwards as well. I don't... You know, she's kind of sitting there going, what happened? What do you mean, what? You literally got the shit kicked out of you and got drilled into steel steps a couple of times, not to mention a knee around the shoulder blade slash back of the head, depending on where it was supposed to be aimed for by Sonya Deville. And you're just kind of standing there. And like, Jamie Noble's like, can we get some help out here? He didn't sell it either. I just think it was a real letdown. This segment, with just a little bit more effort and a little bit more passion, could have been sold beautifully. And instead, it came across as tepid this was a lukewarm milk that's what that was no not good enough for me not good enough so the tag team division is for me one of the biggest saving graces of wwe smackdown and this was no exception now i'm not a huge fan of forgotten sons they do kind of feel like it's almost like vince McMahon sort of um said to triple h hey i hear this uh the son disputed era is good shit <laughs> And he was just like, yeah, 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 they're really fucking good. Great. Son of a smacked down. And Triple H is like, ah, I don't really want to do that. Hey, Forgotten Sons, do you want to fucking tip up? Like, <laughs> just send them over instead. Bollocks to it. Um, they're fine. They're good workers. Not a big fan of the gimmick. Well, I mean, again, what gimmick? Uh, sort of marine, sort of not. Um, obviously, the New Day won the tag team titles without participating as a tag team I hated that I love the New Day, I hated that decision though, and oh, they're doing their best to try and ruin it, but the tag teams are just great this was a really good competitive match Forgotten Sons versus New Day, Forgotten Sons knock off New Day, you gotta think they're gonna be in line for a number one contendership once again Michael Cole was doing his real damnedest to try and ruin this for me, because he just would not shut the fuck up bickering with Miz and Morrison. Miz and Morrison were very entertaining on commentary. Uh, I actually quite like Corey Graves as well. He seems to have good chemistry with them. But Michael Cole just... He just in, oh. So you're supposed to be the face commentator, and you are quite literally... I mean, I guess you are on Fox, so you need to be a shit-stirring penis. But he's sitting there fucking banging on, saying like, oh, yeah, it's... um." Morrison held his own. You didn't miss. Like, I'm sorry. What the fuck? Like, you're supposed to be a face. You're just being a shit stirring little prick. You know? It's just fucking. There's no need for it. It's this shock value journalism that they seem to have just inserted in there. And oh man. Like, fucking hell. Michael Cole fucking sucks. Can we just admit that, please? Michael Cole is fucking terrible. But, tag team match was great. Really enjoyed it. Forgotten Sons are great wrestlers. Hopefully, they're going to advance a little bit more. Going to have something good behind them going forward. But, I did feel like this was a little bit too much too soon, if you ask me. New Day have just won the titles again. That feels like... It, it does feel like they're just padding their record at this point, just to give them more title wins. Like... You know, I'd rather keep the Usos competitive, keep that nice little rivalry going, and the Forgotten Sons winning means they're pretty much entitled to a title shot now. And I don't like that either. They've been here about three weeks. Come on, do better. Like, wait, build them up more. Give us vignettes, tell us what they're like. Don't just fucking lob everything at the wall immediately. I get it. Pandemic's on, it's difficult. You've got to pace yourself but oh jesus they just gotta rush everything this is the one good thing you had at this point of the show take it easy let it breathe why didn't miz and morrison get involved maybe cause a double dq you know there's loads of different things you could have done um and like i say commentary fucking hot garbage pissing me off no end like i don't want to be that guy who's like oh the old era is better but come on this is night and day compared to things like, you know, Brain and Monsoon and, um, 
you know, obviously the classic combinations of J.R. Jerry Lawler, J.R. and Paul Heyman, you know, even Michael Cole and Taz back in the SmackDown era of 2003, 2004 was so much better than this trash. Honestly, do fucking bear, even out, or just, oh, fucking, uh, you know, just turf Michael Cole somewhere else in the company. I'm sure he's got a lot of value somewhere else. So just move him out of the way and make Tom Phillips the lead announcer for both shows. Tom Phillips is so much better. Or, or for fuck's sake, pay Mauro Ronaldo all the money you can have him do the main roster again, seeing as JBL isn't around to shove a finger up his ass like he normally tends to do with younger men. Um, you know, it ultimately is what it is. Allegedly, by the way. You know, don't want to get a fucking litigation from that big old toss piece. It is what it is. It is what it is. The commentary is garbage and you just kind of have to watch this shit on mute. But great tag team match. And I'm very curious to see what it can do with the tag team division going forward. One real positive that I did have from this show was the backstage promos. The kind of vignettes and things that were going on. First of all, we had that wonderful one with Jeff Hardy. That lovely musical package. Like, yeah, How can you not love Jeff Hardy, man? He's just such a cool motherfucker. In every sense. And he's gone through so much, which makes him very relatable to us, you know, as people. We look at Jeff Hardy, he feels vulnerable, he feels real. And they're selling that really well. It'll be interesting to see what they do with the whole Seamus thing going forward, hopefully. Because Seamus is actually a good mic worker. Don't know what the fucking nonsense was with Michael Cole. I swear this show was all about Michael Cole just trying to fucking piss me off. Um, but also, uh, just great chemistry backstage. So I actually really enjoyed the women's brawl. Uh, where Sasha basically distracted Tamina and Bailey took a cheap shot at her and then all hell broke loose and Lacey Evans got involved. I like that. thought it was really, really cool. Really, really fun. Really liked it. Very uh, snappy and succinct. Also very amusing to me seeing Sanjay Dutt on my television again. Um, just thought, I don't know why, it just popped me. I was like, oh my god, it's Sanjay Dutt. I'm sure he's been on television before. I'm sure some fucking... Larry Nerdy Smark, you know, some basement dwelling Cheeto eating motherfucker is probably going to message me like, ah, oh, Sanjay Dutt's been on TV several times for WWE. Shut the fuck up, nobody cares. I thought it was good and it popped me, so I'm happy. Uh, and also, really, really liked the Otis and Mandy Dynamic. Let's be honest, right? This dynamic is by far and away the best thing they have going, arguably in WWE, but most definitely on SmackDown. The little vignette, the little promo, should I say, backstage with Otis and Mandy was really funny. And him just going, oh yeah, oh yeah, I think he's fucking great. I love Otis, he's so much fun, he's charismatic, and Dolph Ziggler really hit the nail on the head. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of what Sonya Deville did when she was at ringside, it was okay. But, oh my god, she fucking burnt my screen down with that amazing backstage promo with Dolph Ziggler. And do you know what? I'm not a huge fan of Dolph Ziggler. I thought he was fucking fantastic too. I fucking love that. I really felt power and emotion coming out of that. And I think that's because this rivalry, this segment, this storyline has just been incredible. Everyone involved from Otis and Tucker to obviously Mandy and Sonya and even Dolph Ziggler as this you know nasty conniving piece of shit pretending to be a good guy sliding you know up in front of Mandy Rose in a way as like a snake. It's been fucking great and it's been relatable. It's something that a lot of people can relate to. They understand this relationship difficulties. Yeah it's a soap opera. Yeah it's dramatic but it's something that we know happens in real life and I think that's what helps itself so well and yeah great stuff really loved it I love their backstage promo Sonia Deville is on fire she smoulders off screen the way she was looking at Ziggler the way she was emoting the way she was talking about how he's a better guy you know talking about how I'm going to hurt her I'm going to keep her and I was like oh mate this is this is gold pure storyline gold when WWE gets their storylines right this this is the quality you can expect from them. And it's just a fucking shame that it isn't available anywhere else across their product. Other than, of course, NXT, where everyone's fucking killing it as per usual. Especially Gargano, who's on fire as well. But I love this. thought this was an incredible backstage promo. And obviously built in beautifully to the main event, which you expect to deliver from an emotional standpoint. Dolph Ziggler versus Otis to determine the last participant of the men's Money in the Bank. Um, not this Sunday, next Sunday, for WWE Money in the Bank. Thought this match was fine. Uh, biggest problem I have with it is it was too short, actually. 
Um, by the time they'd sort of got going and we'd had the advert break and only had about five or six minutes, just felt really, really cheap. Um, I found it very interesting actually. You had two Money in the Bank qualifying matches, big matches as well, involving your two most likable stars, arguably, other than Bray Wyatt, uh, in Mandy Rose and Otis. And I think like if you combine the two of them, like <laughs> they were given about. 10 15 minutes that's that's not good enough man you gave like it seemed i mean it probably wasn't nearly as long as it felt but brian and corbin felt like it went on for an age and the new day and the forgotten sons had a really long competitive match as well and i thought that's fine but not at the expense of the two most important matches of the night which were easily these two matches so you know it was disappointing from that perspective but like the match thought it was fine um you know otis moving on is great i think otis being in that match would be fantastic really excited about money in the bank actually really love this concept of climbing the corporate ladder working their way up from the ground floor of wwe headquarters really really hoping that at some point like otis just burst for a door if it's a man sitting on the shitter or something he's like god damn it i said get out <laughs> like just anything really just the you know all the crazy cardi nonsense i like, just yeah or even better like like everybody like men and women because apparently they're gonna both be going on simultaneously which is going to be insane if that's the case um, I just love the idea of maybe like Vince McMahon, like you know, camera pans and he's like standing there going, "Oh, it's such good shit." <laughs> it's yeah, it could be phenomenal. But SmackDown really, um, really peaked at the back end. Thought the last sort of half an hour or so was really, really good, but as an overall show, not very good at all. And you know, like I say, again, you know, main event, Michael Cole and Corey Graves. It almost seemed surprised that Otis had won. Like, and even then, they they sort of surprised by the finish. Like, Otis gets him. Great. I was like, sell the fucking moment. This is a huge moment, Otis. Yeah. I mean, I know the WrestleMania match was big, but this cemented his place in Money in the Bank, which will easily be his biggest match ever. So you could argue this win was the biggest of his career. And they're like, yeah, Otis moves on thanks fuck me lads do better but yeah for the back end of smackdown was good would love to know what you guys think so make sure you like subscribe hit that notification icon so that you can get notifications the bell icon of course hit that so that you can get notifications of all our content going forward loads of videos to come loads of content to come especially interviews as well we've been very very lucky to have some amazing wrestlers come on recently and we've got a lot more coming for you so make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel get involved and of course on the social media is at wrestleplug across all social media platforms so don't forget as well wrestleplug.com for all your article and wrestling needs from myself Aaron Nix thank you very much for listening we'll catch you very soon for more nonsense from the wrestleplug <laughs>